Today, we're going to make abstract compositions inspired by the famous artist Kandinsky. A composition is another word for an artwork. Here is a painting by Kandinsky, and here is an example of our project. We will be using the elements of art, shape, line, and color in this project. First, let's watch a story about Kandinsky. This is the book, The Noisy Paint Box, by the author Barb Rosenstock. The Paint Box by Barb Rosenstock, illustrated by Mary Grand Pre. Vaja Kandinsky spent his days learning to be a proper Russian boy. He studied bookfuls of math, science, and history. He practiced piano scales to the marching click of the metronome. He sat stiff and straight at dressed up dinners while the grown ups talked and talked and talked. Baja's well off world was perfectly polite until the day his aunt gave him a small wooden paint box. Every proper Russian boy should appreciate art, said Andy. She showed Vaja the correct way to mix colors on the paint box palette. Vaja mixed red with yellow, then he mixed red with blue. As the colors changed, Vaja heard a whisper. Yes. Louder. Yes. Then louder still. Yes. What's that sound? asked Vaja. I don't hear a thing, said Andy. Vaja listened as his brush stirred and swished. The swirling colors trilled like an orchestra tuning up for a magical symphony. Mama, Papa, called Vaja. What a noisy paint box. Silly Vasily, said Papa. Stop being foolish, said Mama. Vaja painted the sounds of the colors. He spun a bright lemon circle onto the canvas. It clinked like the highest notes on the keyboard. He brushed a powerful navy rectangle that vibrated deeply like the lowest cello strings. He tossed up jagged swashes of blaring crimson and added cheerful dots of burbling green, clanging orange, and tinkling violet. Vaja painted and painted until the colors went quiet. Look what I made, shouted Vaja. Is it a house, asked Auntie? Is it a flower, asked Mama? What is it supposed to be, asked Papa. It's music, said Vaja, waltzing his painting around the house. Calm down, said Mama. Do some math, said Papa. Heaven, said Auntie. This boy needs a proper art class. So Vaja went to art class and learned to draw houses and flowers just like everyone else. As the years passed, Vaja finished school and studied to be a lawyer. He ignored his noisy paint box and lived the way people expected. But Vaja couldn't ignore the sounds of the colors singing to him in the streets of Moscow. The canary colored mailbox whistling as he rode to work. The scarlet sunset haze ringing above the ancient Kremlin walls. An ivory chorus of snowflakes scattered on the sable collar of his overcoat. One evening, suitably steamed and starched, Vaja attended the opera. As the orchestra's music crashed around him, the colors of the noisy paint box twirled wildly in his mind, stomping lines of vermilion and coral, caroling triangles into pistachio and garnet, thundering arches of, of, of aqua and ebony with shrill points of cobalt and saffron. Vaja heard the colors singing. Vaja saw the music dancing. As Vaja was never quite as proper again, he quit his job teaching law and moved from Moscow to Munich to be a painter. He studied with this famous teacher, then that one. Is it a house? Is it a flower? What's it supposed to be? His teachers asked. Vaja wanted to paint the colors he heard, but maybe the famous teachers knew best. Once again, Vaja put houses and flowers, animals and people into his paintings, just like everyone expected. The teachers were happy. Vaja was not. His artist friends understood. They too were tired of painting pretty landscapes and pretty ladies. They thought art needed to change. Art should make you feel, Vaja told them, like music. Exactly, said his friends, but none of them knew how to paint feelings until the day Vaja grew brave enough and invited the world to see the paintings roaring from his noisy paint box. Hiss, rattle, bash, tweet, whistle, murmur, zip, clang, fizz. Snapping cerulean points, crunching crimson squares, whispering charcoal lines, Vaja named these paintings after the music he loved. Improvisation, composition, accompaniment, 
fugue, movement, and simply three sounds. With his noisy paint box, Vaja Kandinsky created something entirely new, abstract art. It took a long time for people to understand. Is it a house? Is it a flower? What is it supposed to be? It's my art, Vaja answered. How does it make you feel? And that, my friends, is Vaja Kandinsky. So that was a true story about Kandinsky when he was a child. So Vasily Kandinsky is a famous abstract artist from Russia who lived from 1866 to 1944. Kandinsky felt that he could express his feelings and the sounds of music through colors, shapes, and lines in his paintings. At first, people did not accept that just shapes and lines could be art. Kandinsky is now known as the founding father or the creator of abstract art. And abstract art means art does not have a subject like a place or a person or an object. We are going to use geometric shapes organic shapes and lines to draw our abstract compositions. Then we will add color. We'll talk about what geometric shapes and organic shapes are in just a minute. For your supplies, you'll need a piece of paper, a pencil, an eraser, a black marker, and coloring materials. First, we'll start with the pencil and we'll draw a large shape in the middle of our papers. Then we'll draw a line through the shape that goes to the edges of our paper. You need to make sure that you fill your paper with at least five shapes and five lines. More than five is better. Then we'll outline our shapes and lines with a black marker. We'll make some shapes have thick outlines to show emphasis. So you can see how the circle has a thick black outline, which makes it stand out. And lastly, we'll color in using contrast making each shape stand out by spacing out our colors. So for your materials, you'll need a piece of paper, a pencil, an eraser, a black marker to outline, and some coloring materials. I'm going to use crayons and markers for this. So before we get started, let's go over some different types of shapes that we can use in our Kandinsky abstract art. So we have shapes called geometric shapes. So there are geometric and organic shapes. Geometric shapes are shapes that you know a name for, like a triangle, a square, a circle, a hexagon, a shape with six sides, a diamond, a rectangle. There are more geometric shapes that we can think of, but the opposite of that is organic shapes. So shapes that don't have a name. Shapes that might start with a line, like a wavy line, have a straight line, maybe a zigzag line. There's no right or wrong way to draw an organic shape. So Kandinsky included both organic and geometric shapes in his art. He also used a variety of lines. So we will be using lines in our art too. To start, I'm going to draw a large shape on my paper. You can use any kind of shape that you can think of. I chose a circle. Maybe you want a square, a rectangle, a triangle, or even an organic shape. This is your artwork and it's totally up to you. Now I'm going to break that shape in half by drawing a line through it. Make sure your line goes from one side of your paper all the way to the other side. It could be a vertical line, it could be a horizontal line, or it could be a diagonal line. Totally up to you. Now I'm going to overlap a shape here. This is a triangle, but wait, it's not a triangle. I'm gonna make it an organic shape. So it, you thought it was a triangle, but it's not because it doesn't have a straight line here. Now I'm just going to continue to draw lines that break up the space and shapes that fill up the space. Okay. 
Kandinsky liked to listen to music when he made his art. So listen to the music in the video and think about what sounds you hear and what they represent and what they represent to you. Do you hear a shape? Is a sound really loud and does it remind you of a certain kind of line like a zigzag or maybe a soft sound reminds you of a dashed line. So I have one, two, three, four shapes. I would say you need at least five shapes and five lines for your abstract art. Let's see how many lines I have. One, two, three, four, five, but I think that I can include more. The more overlapping of shapes you have, the more interesting your artwork will be. Remember that you can make up organic shapes by starting with a line and turning it into a shape by closing it with a different line. So now I am done drawing my abstract composition in pencil, but now I need to outline. So I have two black markers here. One is thicker, one is thinner, and I'm gonna choose some shapes that I want to really stand out. So choose two or three shapes at least to outline in a thicker line. If you don't have a thick marker, then you can go back over your outline again to make it thicker, just like I'm doing here. So I wanted this spiral to stand out, so I outlined. Maybe I will do this wavy line. Maybe I'll do this cross. This diamond shape. Now the rest of the lines, I'm going to outline with a thinner marker. Or if you're only using one marker, just remember to make some of the lines thicker by going over them a second time. All of my shapes and lines are outlined with a black marker. My space is filled, so you wanna make sure that your paper is filled with shapes and lines. You have at least five shapes and five lines on your paper, but more is better. I definitely have more than that. We use some geometric shapes, shapes that we know the names of, like circle, square, triangle, rectangle, and we also used some organic shapes or shapes that we don't have a name for that we just made up out of different types of lines. Also, you should have some shapes that are outlined 
with a thicker line so that they show up more. We are showing emphasis with this by creating a focal point. Our eye is drawn to the shapes that have a thick outline first. So what shape do you want to show up the most? The next step with this is adding some color. So I'm going to use crayons and markers to add color. The crayons I'll use more for the background areas and the markers I'm going to use for the shapes that I want to stand out more because markers are brighter than crayons. They're gonna be more vibrant. You can also use any colors that you want, but I would suggest using one color at a time and going around and filling in some of the shapes. Remember to fill in individual shapes that you've made by overlapping here. You're not gonna take a color and go all over with pink because then you would just have a pink paper. We want a variety of colors shown. some shapes colored in with markers. I'm going to go ahead and use crayons. Remember, you can use any materials that you like, but you should try to spread out your colors so you don't have all one color in one section, but that you have colors scattered throughout your artwork. And that is called using contrast when you don't have the same color sitting next to each other and when different colors can make each other stand out when they are placed next to each other. If you're using a material like crayons or colored pencils, you can use something called value by pressing harder on your crayon or colored pencil to get a darker color out of it and letting go and pressing lightly to get a light color. When you add value to your artwork, it can add more dimension and make things look 3D or like there's a shadow. So I'm kind of layering some different blues here to add even more value. So I'm pressing harder to make a darker blue and I'm gradually getting lighter to get a lighter blue. So I am done adding color now. I left a couple spaces white, and instead of just leaving them blank, I'm going to draw some lines inside, and then they'll be black and white. And that will just add a little more detail. I hope you had fun creating your abstract composition inspired by Kandinsky, using geometric and organic shapes, as well as line and color.